this potato chip, it has no protein. Like a lot of mm-hmm. these foods that are hyper palatable have very low protein. And our other mutual friend, Ted Naiman, Dr. Ted Naiman, um, I think it's a really simple kind of equation. His PE is deal we, is genius. Yeah. I yeah. love the PE stuff, but even his, his broader stuff of just explaining, going back to explaining how we went to hell since 1980 is when you go from 15% protein to 12% protein, yeah. that 3% energy drop or protein drop can explain why someone would eat 300 more calories per day. Uh, there's a book, Eat Like the Animals. What is it? Robin Heimer and Sips. Mm. The two researchers, another guy, Marty Kendall, another great, nu- great nutrition guy. friend yep. that we both know, wrote an article about it. This is actually, this is all coming back around in circles about that they kind of falsified their data. I don't know if you caught this long blog post he did, but he, they, he dug into their data and he found out, I ate, have you read Eat Like the Animals? I have, have not. No, book? no. Great book. Great book. But the problem is it it gets a lot of things wrong. It thinks mm. protein's bad. They have this cognitive dissonance where they're like, protein is fantastic for growing people, mothers, kids, gr- fantastic for old people, but somehow bad for you in your midlife. Everybody else, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so it's because they when they did the mice, they, they did the rodent studies, and they did the protein. They threw out all the mice that died early on the very low-protein diets. Mm. And Marty's writing this screaming like, this is I do the remember problem. That. Yeah. They died because they were on the very low protein diet. You right. need to include them. So he put the data back in and they found that there was no problem with protein. Right. Right. That it, it threw off the data. So I suggest people read, eat like the animals. It's really great. These, these guys, it's just you know, a, it's all a about quick the- aside. Um, the uh, T. Cole and Campbell China study stuff. When you dig into that, animals that eat higher protein end up developing in theory more cancer but what isn't explained in there is that they develop the cancer later and it's only because they're being fed huge amounts of aflatoxin which is going to give anybody or anything cancer the increased protein intake was protective against the cancer Mm. then once you had cancer having that high protein intake wasn't it wasn't as beneficial for them because you're providing a a growth substrate yeah yeah it's interesting. But the protein leverage hypothesis. So that's different from Ted's P to E diet. But what we're kind of ending up or uh, ending our, our time here. But I, I, I think that it's just a lot. It has to do with satiety. It has to do with kind of what went wrong with our whole dietary guidelines yep. is that if you if you drop your protein, you're going to eat more to achieve yep. the same level of protein. Yeah. So just, yeah. Any, any thoughts on, on how that fits in? I, I think that that's, you, you know, the, uh, spot on. And, and, uh, I think that it explains why we have folks in that the really extreme low protein, say like keto camps that they start seeing their weight creep up. And, and, uh, if your protein is inadequate, you will generally overeat whatever else is around, whether that's, that's carbs or like fat. Potato chips. Yeah, like potato, potato chips, chips or sticks of butter, you know, and yeah. it, it's yeah. amazing to me that folks are able to so break something that is so highly satiating. A general ketogenic diet is pretty darn satiating. But if you drop protein levels low enough, you will be hungry all the damn time. And then you will you will do things like the the fat bombs and whatnot. And like it, it is no no problem for me to mix up some sort of like a buttered coffee and have a thousand calories there. And it's kind of one thing if I'm hiking the Pacific Crest Trail and I'm carrying a 60 pound pack and, you know, I'm, I'm really moving my ass. It's like, OK, that makes sense. But I do some jujitsu. I lift some weights. And other than that, I mainly do what you're looking at here, which is sit on my ass. So I don't really need that many calories. Um, I would like to eat enough protein to maintain the muscle and bone density that I've got and, you know, all that type of stuff. But yeah, I really do. I, I think mechanistically, if you were to focus on a thing like the inadequate protein intake really, really drives this stuff. I guess the one caveat I'd put in that is that adequate protein intake amidst a, a hyper palatable, highly processed food environment isn't really going to help it. Like you're just in my opinion, still going to overeat in Mm -hmm. general. Like you're still going to have to kind of limit palate options to some degree. Otherwise you're going to have a tendency to overeat. Well, exactly. I mean, you could eat a big steak and then someone hands you a bag of chips and I could still crush the whole bag of chips. Yeah. 